This is a picture of the Council of Nicaea. This is one of the places where you actually get your Bible in its current form. Uh, it's also the place where, for the first time, uh, a bunch of pastors get together to kind of come up with what is now called the doctrine or the teaching of the Trinity. Who exactly is Jesus? How does he relate to God the Father? And this is uh, the Emperor Constantine. And he became a Christian. He was the Roman Emperor. And then he, uh, because the emperor was now a Christian, it wasn't illegal to be a Christian anymore. And so he brings together hundreds of Christian leaders from all over the Roman Empire, even some from beyond the borders of the Roman Empire. And many of these are guys who have wounds on their body from being tortured because they believed in Jesus. And they get together and they basically have one big question to answer. Uh, there was a, a controversy going on, and the controversy was this. Who exactly is Jesus? Is he just an angel? Is he just like the first person that God ever created? Is he just a really, really amazing human being? Or is he God himself? You can see there's, there's one bishop underneath in the bottom of this. This is Arius, if you've ever... I don't know, if maybe some of you know your church history. This is, uh, he was the founder of the Arian heresy. He said that Jesus was, was not actually God himself. Almost unanimously, as they met at this council, these bishops, church leaders, they said, no, when you read your Bible, when you see what Jesus said about himself, the very clear teaching of the Bible is that Jesus claimed to be the God who created the universe. And they said, that is extremely important. Extremely important. Here's the famous part of the famous statement that they came up with. And I'm going to read it for you. We don't really do creeds in our church. This is a famous creed of the early church. They had statements that they recited that were about um, what we believe. A creed is, I believe. That's what creed means. We don't recite them anymore because especially in the Middle Ages, these things got way out of hand. And they got really, really long, and people held them up over the Bible. And we hold the Bible as the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So did these early church leaders. But I want to read this to you because it is quite beautiful and gives us, uh, this is the result of them wrestling with passages just like what we've read here in Colossians. And here's what they said. We believe in one God. One God. The Father Almighty maker of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begotten of the Father, the only begotten, that is, of the essence of the Father, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. These guys loved big words. There was a long, long debate about this word. Consubstantial with the Father, by whom all things were made, both in heaven and on earth. And even though we're not going to start reciting creeds or anything like that in our church, this is a good summary a good expression of the truth we see in the Bible. Somehow they are different people, Jesus and God, but they are one, one God. And here we'll come to the end of this message for today. Here's the whole point. Why argue about something like that? Why make such a big deal about it? Because if he isn't God, the price isn't enough to redeem the world. Because if he isn't God, a scraped knee can be redeemed, but not the 18 million. If he isn't God, maybe the kids sitting alone at lunch can be redeemed, but your sin cannot be forgiven. A human life cannot be redeemed if he isn't God. The only thing that can redeem something that is irredeemable is a price beyond imagination. God of God, very God of very God, light of light, allows himself to die 
for the sin of the world. 